grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Two men walked up to a door. One of them took a deep breath and nervously knocked. The door opened. A man stood there. He looked at the two men standing there in his doorway when he suddenly recognized one and his, his face turned red with anger. But before he could say a word, they handed him a letter. Suspiciously, he begins to read the letter, glancing up every so often at the two men standing in front of him. The two men standing in their, the doorway, their names were Tychicus, and Onesimus. And the guy reading the letter was a guy named Philemon. And this is their story. Philemon and Onesimus were from the same town, a town called Colossae in what is today the country of Turkey. And the Bible doesn't tell us a whole lot about those two men. What we do know is this. Philemon was a Christian and a leader in the church of Colossae. And Onesimus was his slave. Wait, what? A Christian owning a slave? Isn't slavery bad? And yeah. But you've got to understand that in those days, slavery was very common. And Onesimus was one of millions of slaves in the Roman Empire at the time. In fact, experts estimate that slaves comprise somewhere between 50 to 75 percent of Rome's population. And it may surprise you to know that the Bible actually never condemns slavery. It doesn't. In fact, the Apostle Paul tells slaves that they should honor and obey their masters. He tells the masters that they should treat their, their slaves with love and respect. Don't get me wrong. The Bible nowhere encourages, commands, or even condones slavery. Slavery isn't good, but what God is saying, what the Bible says is that if you find yourself a slave, that you should try to be the best slave you can to God's glory. And if you're a Christian and own slaves, you should treat them with love and respect. Now we don't actually know what kind of slave owner Philemon was. The Bible doesn't tell us. But we do know that Onesimus wasn't a very good slave. In fact, he ran away. And he didn't just run away. He ran away with his pockets full. He stole from Philemon. And after he ran away, Onesimus made his way to the city of Rome, the center of the world at that time. And while in Rome, a friend took Onesimus to see a man who was under house arrest, awaiting trial before the Roman emperor. And that man's name was Paul. Paul was in chains at the time, in kind of like a, a halfway house. He was, he, was, he was chained to a Roman soldier in a house, but he couldn't leave. He could have people come to visit him, but he couldn't go anywhere. And it was there th at Paul's house, through Paul, that Onesimus learned about Jesus. He learned that God could love and forgive even a, a dirty, thieving, runaway slave like him. And Onesimus was so thankful for God's amazing love and forgiveness that he dedicated his life to serving God and, and to helping Paul in his ministry. He became Paul's arms and legs. He, he ran errands for Paul. He became his messenger. He helped him in his ministry. But as Onesimus grew in his faith and grew closer to Paul, one day he shared with Paul his deep, dark secret. He was a runaway slave. He was a thief. 
And as he, he shared his story with Paul, Onesimus came to realize that he, he had to go face the consequences of what he had done. He, he decided he needed to go back. But then he mentioned to Paul the name of his former owner, Philemon of Colossae. Wait, what? Paul actually knew Philemon. Philemon was a Christian. In fact, Paul had been the one to share with Philemon the good news about Jesus. Like Onesimus, Philemon was a Christian. So Paul decided to send Onesimus back to, back to Philemon with another guy named Tychicus and a letter. A letter which became a book in the Bible. A letter named for the man standing there in the doorway staring at his former slave. The book of Philemon. And our text for today is the heart of that short little letter. It's our, our second reading for today. And I'm going to read it to you again now that you know the back story. Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our dear friend and fellow worker. Your love has given me great joy and encouragement because you, brother, have refreshed the hearts of the Lord's people. Therefore, although in Christ I could be bold and order you to do what you ought to do, Yet I prefer to appeal to you on the basis of love. It is none other than Paul, an old man, and now also a prisoner of Christ Jesus, that I appeal to you for my son Onesimus, who became my son while I was in chains. Formerly he was useless to you, but now he has become useful both to you and to me. I am sending him, who is my very heart, back to you. I would have liked to keep him with me so that he could take your place in helping me while I'm in chains for the gospel. But I did not want to do anything without your consent, so that any favor you do would not seem forced, but would be voluntary. Perhaps the reason he was separated from you for a little while was that you might have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but better than a slave, as a dear brother. He is very dear to me, but even dearer to you both as a fellow man and as a brother in the Lord. So if you consider me a partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. If he has done you any wrong or owes you anything, charge it to me. I, Paul, am writing this with my own hand. I will pay it back. Not to mention that you owe me your very self. I do wish, brother, that I may have some benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. Confident of your obedience, I write to you knowing that you will do even more than I ask. This is the word of the Lord. That moment, standing there in that doorway, must have been hard for both of those men. It must have been hard for Onesimus. Because it is hard to admit to somebody when we've done them wrong. It's hard to say we're sorry. It's hard to face the consequences of our actions. I mean, usually when we mess up and get caught, we don't like to admit it. The first thing we do is usually to lie. Did you eat that cookie? No, mommy. It wasn't me. But then when we can't deny it, we make an excuse. But mommy, I was hungry. Or we try to rationalize what we did. But mommy, it's not fair that I can't have cookies before supper. Or we even try to deflect and accuse. But mommy, sometimes you eat cookies before supper too. It's hard to admit that we've done something wrong. It's hard to ask for forgiveness. It's hard to say we're sorry without saying a, a, adding a but. And it's especially hard when we have to face the consequences of what we've done. I mean, if you admit it, you could lose your job. 
If you admit it, you could get in trouble at school. If you admit it, you could end up in jail. But look at Onesimus in our text for today. You know, in those days, if you were an escaped slave and you got caught, the punishment was being beaten and then being branded on your forehead, marked forever as a runaway slave. And if you ran away again, the punishment was crucifixion. What they did to Jesus. Onesimus did not know how Philemon was going to react as he stood there in the doorway. And yet there he stood. He stood there trusting that God had forgiven him forever because of Jesus. He stood there knowing that his Savior wanted him to face what he had done and make it right. He stood there trusting God's promise that even if he had to suffer for doing what was right, that God would in the end make it all work out for his good. My friends, when you mess up, admit what you've done. Ask for forgiveness. First to to God. Trusting that He has forgiven you forever because of Jesus. I mean, you don't have to carry around the guilt of your deep, dark secrets. God already knows what you did. And He forgives you. But then out of love and thanks to Him, trusting in His promises, Go and make it right. I mean, if you've hurt people, admit it. Tell them you're sorry. No excuses, no buts. Face the consequences of what you've done, trusting that God will make it work out for you in the end. But that's hard to do, isn't it? It was hard for Onesimus standing there that day in that doorway. But it wasn't just hard for him. It was hard for Philemon too. I mean, you can imagine. Philemon must have been angry. He must have been hurt by this this, this slave who ran away. And now he was standing there. This dirty, lying, thieving, runaway slave. And Paul was asking him to forgive him. And not only to forgive him, but to love him, not as a slave, but as a, as a brother in the faith. Paul even implies here that if Philemon was so inclined, it'd be nice if he could send Onesimus back to him to continue helping him in his ministry. You know, honestly, for me, personally, the hardest thing that God asks me to do as a Christian is to forgive people who have hurt me. That's hard for me. Because forgiveness is so unfair. They hurt me. Why should I have to forgive them? Why should I have to love someone who keeps doing bad things to me? Forgiveness is inherently unfair. But the truth is, you don't want fair. Fair means you paying for what you have done in your life. Fair means you having to suffer the punishment you deserve in hell forever. You don't want fair. You want mercy. You want forgiveness. And you have that in Jesus. And when we truly understand that, when we truly appreciate the fact that God forgives us completely and forever because of Jesus, that motivates us to choose to forgive those who have done us wrong. 
And forgiveness is a choice. It's a choice. God isn't going to do this for you. It's not like all of a sudden God makes all the hurt and, and anger just magically disappear from our hearts. You've got to choose to do it. Now, God will help you. God gives us strength to forgive through his word and sacraments. But in the end, forgiveness is something you choose to do. And what makes forgiveness even harder is that you can make that choice to forgive. And you can actually forgive somebody one day and be at peace with them. But then all of a sudden, a few weeks later, you run into them. Or you think about what they did to you. And then all of a sudden, the, all the anger and hurt come rushing back. And then you got to go through that whole hard process of, of forgiving and letting go all over again. Forgiving is hard. In fact, for me, it's, I'd say it's the hardest thing God asks me to do. This, this morning's sermon is hard. As we stare at those men standing awkward, awkwardly in that, that doorway, we see some of the hardest things God asks us to do as His children. But knowing that He has forgiven you, trusting in His promises, He now encourages you, He commands you to have those hard conversations with those whom you have wronged or those who have wronged you. So do what Onesimus did. Take a deep breath and admit what you've done. Go to that person and tell them you're sorry. No, no buts, no excuses. Tell your parents, your boss, your teacher, your husband, your wife what you did. And yes, there may be consequences. But know that God will, will be with you. And he will make it work out for your good. I know it's hard. And then also do what, what Paul encouraged Philemon to do. Forgive those who have wronged you. In fact, we're going to do something a little different. Right now, just take a moment. I want you to think about somebody in your life that has wronged you, that has hurt you, that, that ang has angered you. That's not hard, is it? I am confident every single person in this room has already thought of of somebody but now think about all the the junk and garbage those dark secrets in your life all of which God has forgiven forever because of Jesus and seeing his forgiveness now let go of your anger love that person as God has loved you Forgive as God has forgiven you. I know it's hard. May God help us to do these hard things. Amen. And now may that peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.